In this tutorial, I am going to show you how to create this rapid shutter paper effect in Premiere Pro. Alright, you can see on the timeline I have got some short video clips. Each of these video clips consists of 9 frames, maintaining a consistent length throughout. However, the final video clip stands out as it exceeds the standard length, containing more than 9 frames. Firstly, move the time indicator to the first video clip. Now, we need some assets to create the rapid shutter paper effect. I already have some paper overlays and a sound effect on my computer. You can download all these assets by using the link provided in the video description. The next step is to import all the assets in inside the project panel. Once that's done, let's drag and drop the first ripped paper overlay on top of the first footage. After that, we need to adjust the resolution by selecting the set to frame size. Also, we need to adjust the duration of the ripped paper overlay. Now, let's move over to the effects panel to apply an effect to the first footage. This is a track mat key effect. And then, it's important to switch over to the effect controls panel to fine tune the parameters of the track mat key effect for our specific needs. I will choose the second track to serve as the mat layer ensuring it fits our desired design perfectly. Now you can see the changes on the program monitor. To begin, we need to create a duplicate of the first ripped paper layer and move it up one track in our composition. After positioning it, we will adjust the blending mode by selecting Screen from the available options in the Blending Mode drop-down menu. Once this adjustment is made, you will notice significant changes in the program monitor. After that, make sure the top paper overlay is selected. Next, we will navigate to the Lumetri Color panel, where we will dive into customizing the RGB B curves property to fine tune the color grading and contrast to our liking. You need to do this very carefully so you can get the best result. Once that initial step is complete, let's turn our attention to the first video clip along with the ripped paper overlays. Begin by right clicking on these layers to bring up the context menu. From there, let's select the option to nest. This action will combine them into a single sequence, which I will name Shot 1 for clarity and organization. Finally, confirm this action by clicking OK. In the same way, we need to carefully repeat this process for the remaining footage. This meticulous process will enable us to blend textures seamlessly. As you can see in the timeline, we have nine different shots, each one poised to contribute to the overall aesthetic and flow of the transition. In the next step, let's move the time indicator to the first shot, and then let's move over to the effects panel to apply some effects. Firstly, I am going to apply a directional blur effect. Next, I am going to apply another effect. This is a transform effect. Let's drag and drop the transform effect onto the first shot. And lastly, we need to apply another effect. This is a brightness and contrast effect. Let's drag and drop the brightness and contrast effect onto the first shot. All right, now let's go over to the effect controls panel to customize all the effects. From the directional blur effect, let's make the direction parameter value around 90 degrees. After that, we have to make the blur length parameter value around 0.3. In the next step, we have to customize the remaining effects. Firstly, make sure the time indicator is at the beginning of the first shot. And then, we need to create keyframes for the position parameter, brightness, and contrast parameters by clicking on the stopwatch icon. Now, to adjust the Y position parameter, slowly decrease its value until the video is completely out of view. Keep a close eye on the screen as you make these adjustments, and stop once the video disappears entirely from your line of sight. After that, let's make the shutter angle parameter value around 100, and then, we have to make the brightness parameter value around 100. Next, we need to make the contrast parameter value around 40. Once that's done, move the time indicator 3 frames forward. Here, we have to make the brightness and the contrast parameter value around zero by clicking on this reset parameter icon. And then, we have to set the Y position parameter value as default. We can do this by clicking on the reset parameter icon. Now you can see the changes on the program monitor. In the following step, we need to select all the effects that have been applied in the first shot. Once selected, we will copy these effects to ensure we have them ready for use. Next, we need to select the rest of the shots and paste all the copied effects onto them. After that, we need to move the time indicator to the beginning of the last video clip, and then move the time indicator additional 6 frames forward. Next. Let's move the last keyframes of the brightness and contrast parameters to this new position. This will create a nice flash after the rapid shutter effect. Alright, let's move the time indicator to the beginning of the first shot. Now, we need to move the time indicator 3 frames forward. Next, I am going to move the second shot to the second track on the timeline, and then overlap this with the first one in this position. Again, we need to move the time indicator 3 frames forward. Next, I am going to move the third shot to the third track on the timeline. Repeat this process for all the remaining shots. This process will create a nice rapid shutter effect. And finally, we need to incorporate the rapid shutter sound effect to enhance the visual transition. 
This sound effect will create a more dynamic and attention-grabbing experience for the audience. In this way, you can make a rapid shutter paper effect in just a few simple steps inside Premiere Pro. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like the video and leave a comment.